Welcome to Hero Club Members Only. The show where the founders of Hero Club talk to guests and players from the show about their lives, careers, and really whatever the hell else we want. I'm Nick Williams. And I'm George Primavera. Let's do this. Welcome to Hero Club Members Only. Glad to have you. This is where we talk about all the things that we don't get to say on the show because that's not our thing. Welcome to Hero Club Members Only. Hey, George. Hey, hey, good morning. Good morning. It is an early morning. It's an early one. Oh, it's an early it one this fe- morning. It feels like we're doing like a like radio zoo, like drive time hour. Like we're, yeah. we're those like early Binky go- and the fart. <laughs> yeah. We're up here this morning looking at traffic. <laughs> <laughs> That's how. That's. <laughs> wouldn't it be great if traffic's an, bad? If in an alternate <laughs> reality that was just our lives and we just just uh, succumbed to <laughs> all of our worst instincts and just we did that, did that in college when we read sensitive PSAs and goofy voices. <laughs> that is true. That to was no one, radio. to like one or two shut in to listen to Georgie Springtime's and and the Chairman hey, Hour. I know you're not. I know. I know that you'll you'll think I'm lying. But it was a popular show in downtown Pennsylvania. All right, I had regular Collins. Uh, people knew who I George, was. An upholstery store we we called me every week. For your lies, George, because we don't, have a very fun guest on today. Don't, who's the guest? Nick, uh, our guest today is a uh, frequent guest on the show and uh, current PC on City of Mirrors. You'll know her playing Jade Pickett. It's Lelia Symington, everybody. Good morning, Lelia. Good morning, team. How How's are it going? you? Oh, you know, um, I had to go and drive to get a cable to do this. <laughs> oh, God, so you're no. already pissed that this is so happening I just at all. Hate you now. <laughs> uh, no, I'm very happy to be here. This is so fun. Yay. Oh, it's a good looking mic, by the way. We're on Zoom so I can see that Thank mic. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, this is my new friend. Um, I've been recording the entire season of City of Mirrors on my brother, who is like an audio engineer, his microphone. So now I. He just moved out of my apartment. <laughs> so nice. Because you got married, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's yeah. part of it. I did a little thing getting married, and uh, he was like, okay, now it's weird if I'm here. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Now I right, that's like mind. a uh, that's like a Paul Rudd situation for sure for that for for your brother. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just like, well, let's yeah, kick him to the curb, and can't use his mic anymore. Yes. Huge bummer. Huge bummer. And also, he used to cook for us all the time, so that was a big also huge. Oh bummer. man, <laughs> welcome to Postmates, like loss. the rest of us. <laughs> yeah. A lot of protein. We've all been struggling week. so hard with that. Uh, Mariel and I both do not cook at all, and so and yeah. we've been trying so hard to just like challenge ourselves and each other to cook yep. during quarantine and we'll get like we'll make it like one week and then it will it, we're just we'll give up cooking forever and then it will take like <laughs> mm-hmm. another two months for us to be like well we've spent an absurd amount of money on postmates this week let's try cooking again and then we <laughs> give it up forever again yeah and it just keeps cycling i know like i can make things go from raw to unraw but right. that's about the to extent. To unraw? <laughs> yeah. You know, cooked. <laughs> you know. <laughs> unraw, Lelia? <laughs> so as you can see, <laughs> my skills it are just, limited. <laughs> it just doesn't mean it will taste good, but it won't kill you. That yeah, you like, like that chicken breast rare. <laughs> Ugh, so awful. Just on the other side of raw. Just yeah. like right after gelatin yeah. texture. Just round the corner. <laughs> around <laughs> the corner from raw good god well <laughs> let's change the subject from raw chicken right away moving Great. on from salmonella lelia yep. we uh also we just want to like really quick talk to you a little bit about D. uh yeah. first thing uh so obviously our audience in hero club knows you from uh some kick-ass appearances like uh oh, you're stop. obviously the uh, a full, I won't. Uh, a full player character and uh, Jade Pickett for City of Mirrors. Um, you've also been uh, a villain as well. If anybody's listened to the Wild Hunt, they heard your craggy old Southern the character. Mother, yeah, the right? mother. The mama the of uh, Persephone. Mama right. Persephone. Uh, mama Persephone. If anybody uh, took a listen to the Wild Hunt, careful, it's scary. Uh, what? <laughs> it's what? Spooky. How, <laughs> it's a spooky. Uh, did you have any D and D experience like before you started playing with us in Hero Club? So very little. Um, I had done 
I'm pre- I think one or two like one off kind of campaigns as like a fun f- friend night activity. Yeah. Um, cool. My now husband, whoa, mm-hmm. um, crazy. <laughs> as of like last week, but yeah. that should be clear that this it's is like very recent, brand yeah. new, new, new territory. Um, but very exciting. Anyway, my husband, um, he is very D and D enthusiastic and um, has done more than I have, and we kind of, I don't know. That is a great episode of Community where they play D and D, and I was just yeah. like, wow, that looks like fun. Um, Chase is one of those infuriating guys who simultaneously has like a great eight pack and plays D and D a lot, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which but, is like a, the great white buffalo of D and D players. He's a god on the forums. They're just like, how do you date women? Um, <laughs> the forums. The forums. Deep in the forums. You know. um, yeah, I didn't know those were real until I met Chase. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But uh, but yeah, no, I've always sort of thought it seemed like a great time. Um, but really, it was you guys uh, where I first came in and was a guest on The Wild Hunt. That was kind mm-hmm. of my first like real go at it, um, certainly from this angle. And I just had a blast. I mean, I, I grew up doing a bunch of um, different voices with my dad, accents, dialects, and funny voices. Um, and I've done a lot of voiceover work, so this was a cool transition. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that actually is a really good transition uh, <laughs> for our next question. Great. Uh, you have such a deep bench of accents and dialects in your arsenal from that kind of craggy old southern drawl in the werewolf to your jade East London Cockney accent. Yeah. What's oh, an accent? What was the other lady I did? Janet. Janet. Oh, and June. Uh, June. Not June Reno. June Reno. In, Don't forget, paid back in spades. Yeah. Paid back in spades. Uh, which is like a classic Brooklyn-y accent. Yeah. What's uh, What's York. an accent that uh, you've perfected that you haven't gotten to use? And what is kind of the first step in your process when you approach a new accent? Um, so I'd love to come and be an Irish lady um, <laughs> sometime for you guys. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, Got it. Marking that down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lilia. I Irish. Why do I have this weird post-it that says Lelia and Irish on my back? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I've always loved doing it. My dad and I were always into it. You know, when I was a little kid, we would just uh, hear somebody, you know, on the street or hear some recording of somebody giving, like, an interview or in a movie mostly. And we're like, oh, damn, that's a good accent. And we just sort of start <laughs> copying them and kind of, you know, speaking to each other and just around the house, annoying the shit out of everybody else um, for like weeks on end until we're like, all right, I feel like we got this. <laughs> that's we so who's, your, what's your, who's your favorite like person you've imitated? Uh, so I feel like I, I like to draw the line. Chase is, husband Chase, is very good at, actually imitating people specifically Uh i do not consider myself a good impressionist i am like i can you stick with the accent yes like so my irish accent mostly comes from saoirse ronan um (laughs) oh gotcha gotcha in my factory like the irish roles that i might play Um, of course and That's like a type of if you were to play an Irish part, you'd probably play a Saoirse Ronan Irish part. Absolutely, yes. Um, and uh, so I like I'll try for the accent off of somebody like that, or or who's that lady who's in Catastrophe and uh, oh uh, uh, Sharon, Sharon Horgan, right? Sharon, yes, she is. Yeah. so hilarious and she's awesome. so funny, and that her show Irish is accent is great too. Um, so yeah, usually it's like I'll pick up the way that they speak, but not not their voice specifically, because I, I I don't think I'm I don't think I'm. Good I get at that. that. <laughs> I, I was watching Dairy Girls on Netflix, oh, and for the Girls whole time so I was funny. like, "Where's the cereal? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Where's the cereal? Where's the milk? We're out of milk." <laughs> I had a guilty pleasure moment uh, very early in quarantine of watching maybe a third of a season of Love Island before I was like, oh, oh my I God. cannot oh, take this oh anymore. Oh, my God, dude. Um, my, my, every time I hear Love Island, my mouth just goes, oh, <laughs> in <laughs> preparation for whatever crazy. Scott, good chat. Scott's got good Charlie, chat. There's like good some, of the, <laughs> some of 
some of the scousers and like just a, a bevy of amazing accents in that oh yeah show. Well, snl has that great sketch about where it's like you've You've heard Scottish and British, but have you heard all the weird shit in between those two places? <laughs> <laughs> it's so real. Uh, so I really many. think you mug me off. Yeah, yeah all so that cra- stuff. I, yeah. We just uh, watched uh, Too Hot to Handle on Netflix, the oh, one where yeah. it's like a bunch of hot people get put on an island and they can't fuck. <laughs> yeah, don't fuck. <laughs> That's, That's the, the whole rule concept. Is they like just start losing money. There's if a they pot start of money, and if they sex. kiss or more, they lose money based on what they do. Oh and and God. they're all like notorious people who hook up all the time. Oh my God! Is there drinking involved? Yes. Yeah. Oh um, yeah, of course. Because, because they Island, want them to fuck they up. They only can have one drink, and they are they have rarely have sex. Like it's a, a <laughs> funny thing where they just sleep in these beds, and it's all kind of pretty PG. Yeah, mm-hmm, this is mm-hmm. not because they're so, <laughs> they're just like <laughs> this is only not talking about it. Like, even if they're not doing it, they're just like screaming. The games are like, we know it. you can't fuck, but wouldn't it be cool if you fucked? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow. But like the whole thing is like trying to get them to have no deeper self-control. connections and stuff. Oh. But yeah. they are like, uh, it is such a hodgepodge. No. Like there are Americans and Australians and like everyone is there. And it's so funny. Like... Here's what a fuckboy looks like in, like, Brisbane versus, like, Houston. Do you, do you prefer uh, Love Island UK or Love Island Australia? Oh, so I, so that was the only time, one of my friends who's really into Love Island was like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited, I can't wait for you to catch up, you know, we have screenings, but by, there's a lot of episodes per season, there's like 50 or something. Yeah, it's and wild. I think I watched maybe... 16 and I was like okay I've had my fill <laughs> I am done with yes, this but I, it was I like, get it. it it was the UK version right. I heard okay. that that was that's kind of like why, why I like the Netflix ones that they're doing now like Too Hot to Handle is like 8 episodes or something yeah, like they're that's just about so right. short yeah that's you're like right. 8 like action packed episodes <laughs> where stuff happens every time Right, people uh, have sorry, to there's lose. a garbage truck. <laughs> there's a garbage truck on my end just ruining my life, but we're going to plow through it cuz this one's live. There's yeah. one there's one that just pulled up outside of mine as well. It's going to start <laughs> crashing in a second. That's too funny. We're yep, just going to we're just going to crazy time powering ahead and it's going to be fine. It's going to be like, "Okay, Lelia, go go go." <laughs> go go go. It's what me was your turning into a transformer? <laughs> <laughs> boop, 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 boop. <laughs> Last thing I will say about uh Love Island, Australia. There is nothing funnier than watching two Aussie bros be like, "Oh, that was uh, that wasn't cool, you mate." Leave me uh, out of this. Feel <laughs> you leave disrespect. me right out of this. It's a lot of disrespect. <laughs> oh my, I wasn't trying to disrespect you, mate. Oh <laughs> it's just god. like a bunch of. <laughs> oh Too god, good. it's. I love that cadence. Yeah, well, the, yeah, they're they're always like they always one duo of guy like two guys always like make a bromance that's stronger than any other relationship. Yeah, right, right, it's right. right. Like I love girls. <laughs> But I love David but I even more. A bloody friend for life, and he might. But David's my mate for life. <laughs> Cute. I'll kill for David. I'll kill for David. <laughs> but beds are all right. <laughs> Lelia, moving on from Love Island, as much as I want to talk about this all day. Yeah. Uh, so obviously, outside of Hero Club, you have this really killer resume. Uh, last year, you starred in the action thriller Brute Force. And we want to know, what was it like to get in fighting shape for a movie and was doing an action role different from other roles that you've done in any significant way? Totally. I, oh man, Brute Force was just the highlight of my life thus far. Um, uh, tell us all about it. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's my, my sister is a director um, mm-hmm. and a writer and she created this film Um and she believes in me, so. <laughs> <laughs> like, and it's brute force spelled B R U T. Yes, like it's a little wine. pun there like because it takes force. place. It's a neo noir film that takes place in wine country, so, uh, so in the cool. central coast of California. Oh, smart! M- wildly beautiful um, up there, and uh, yeah. So you know, it was quarantine where I feel like either you're just packing on the pounds or you're like trying to do something new with your body yep. um and or both and so i was like okay this is such a good excuse i, I have to be this kind of bruiser of a gal who just gets in fights and punches her way out of difficult situations um yeah 
So let's go for it. And, uh, you know, Chase is Mr. Workout Man. So he was very helpful in being nice. um, being such a good, you know, motivator and supporter of that. But I just started boxing. And so more fun, nerdy tech stuff is, you know, Chase has this, the Oculus, the, um, uh, the VR headset, The VR right? headset, yes. Oh, so yeah. cool. there's this amazing boxing game, which actually is mostly, these classes are mostly taught by Aussies. Um, of course. <laughs> randomly. All right, we're going to put this on and we're going to punch Mike. <laughs> How are you going? Good, good job. Yeah, they're like, they just, they, you know, come in for these little like. But don't punch David, I'd kill for David. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> David's weirdly there too. Um, yep. But it's like you put on the headset and it, it's like this whole fun thing of boxing. And uh, it's like back to wee boxing. That's workout. great. Um, so, yeah, I just kind of like did a lot of that and, uh, and you know, pushed myself so much harder than I normally would because I was like, oh, it's a movie. I got to get there. Yeah. And, sick. Um, and then, yeah, we shot for about five weeks um, up in the Central Coast. It was super cool because we had a crew of about 20. Um, but everyone was kind of a little pod up there. So everyone got there at least, you know, a week and a half before. And then we were all getting tested, you know, three times a week. So yeah. Uh, so then, you know, on the weekends, we'd hang out and like cook dinner and just kind of party because we could. We were this sort of 23 person pod, which was. And you're isolated so up there so in like wine awesome. country. So it's not like you're going to have much exterior contamination. Right. No one awesome. was going home to see their, you know, families or whatever. <laughs> We kept them Boo. locked up. <laughs> <laughs> Families. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone just stayed up there the whole time, and it was pretty awesome. Nice. That's so cool. Yeah. A great use of quarantine. I feel like... Totally. I am just, like, getting injuries from, like, walking now <laughs> because <laughs> I've spent so much time sitting. <laughs> Dude, yeah, it's, it very much it's saved, saved the mental health and the physical health for sure. Yeah. There was one scene, one like kind of bigger fight moment where I had uh, a stunt double, which is the second time, only the second time I've ever had a stunt double. And it's always so cool because these people are actually good at fighting. And right. uh, he, he let me, the guy let me do most of it. I kind of wanted to be all, you know, Tom Cruise or whatever and do all my right. own stunts. And he, my sister was just like, this is an indie film. We can't afford for you to do your own stunts in case you right. break your face. Um, It'll ruin everything. You'll ruin you everything. Yeah. So I just, you know, I he let me do like the punches and stuff. But there's a cut. There's a moment where uh, my character runs and like barrel grabs the other guy and like falls onto a gravel ground. And Whoa. so the stunt people do that part. It was pretty <laughs> awesome. You didn't have to do that, nice. but it looks like you did, and it, no uh, one's gonna sure know does. the difference. No one except you people who are listening. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now <laughs> they'll all know. You you gave away I'm your biggest fraud. secret. <laughs> I'm a fraud. <laughs> that is like I feel like it's such a um admirable but like slightly misguided thing that like all of us actors have where it's like if we're yeah. gonna do this stunt, like we gotta do it. And everyone's like, You don't understand. My job is that I only do this for actors who want to do their own stunts but yeah. can't do it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, and it's like, okay, stunt people now have jobs. And if you get hurt, then you're taking, you know, all those 20 people are suddenly out of a job. It's like, you're not, right. it's not noble to do all <laughs> yes. your own stunts. It's pretty yeah. the opposite. Yeah, unless like your life is that, like if you're Tom Cruise and your whole life is doing, like practicing stunts so that when you get to the next MI, like yes. Mission Impossible movie, you can do it. And like, that you can afford to pay people if you yeah. do get hurt. And, right, you'll or you're pay Jackie off Chan everybody. and you're like actually trained to do all that stuff. Right. You're a stunt <laughs> performer who like made good and became like a right. face Not actor. <laughs> Yeah, You'd no. also be Harrison Ford and be 75 and have a door fall on you. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, that a... Or just crash his plane like 400 times. I, that is like the funniest, weirdest thing about Harrison Ford is that he has his pilot's license and he crashes his plane all the time. <laughs> all the time? <laughs> <laughs> More than like twice? Multiple, Multiple times. times. I think it's like three times he's what crashed his plane. Goon. Yeah, Stop seriously. Doing that, what a Harrison. silly idiot. <laughs> Harrison. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, okay. Moving on, still in the kind of general theming of your acting career outside of Hero Club. Yes. 
What's one surprising thing that you learned about Leonard Skinnerd while playing the backup <laughs> singer Cassie Gaines in the biopic Street Survivors? You guys did do your research. What? Wow. No. <laughs> um, we try. Yeah, that was the other movie that I had a stunt double who got like thrown out of a plane. It was awesome. <laughs> um, Jesus. <laughs> well, they notoriously died in a plane crash. I they mean, did. Right. Well, that and that was what the movie is about. Is about them dying in a plane crash. It was pretty horrible. So one cool thing I learned was that the gal that I play, who's the sister of uh, the guy, Steve Gaines, who came in as the lead guitarist, um, she was such a cool lady. And she was the one who many times uh, was like, guys, this plane is fucked up. We need to <laughs> oh not my God, be on that this sucks. plane. I don't like it. She even bought a train ticket so she could meet them there because she didn't want to. And Ronnie the main singer i mean who knows supposedly he like ripped it up and was like you're coming on the plane i mean either way she ended up on the plane but i thought it was oh. you know she was just a really nice and sort of well-loved lady who was the the voice against this horrible broke down plane which is you know sad. Yeah, i didn't know that at all that's awful mm -hmm. no one has ever there are so many stories about like around specifically like celebrity plane deaths you know like yeah. like the day the music died and everything where like there are so many stories of the other people <clears throat> either like immediately around them who didn't get on the plane yes. who like just barely missed it like you know famously Merle Haggard was supposed to be on the the plane with Buddy Holly and he just like overslept you know like, stuff like that where you're just like so crazy such narrow misses yep. and like that's so gnarly of just like I am telling you over and over let's not get on this plane it's just, oh, it's so Oh, bad. I know. Yeah, my, uh, you know, I feel like every tragedy, there's all these stories of like, oh, I just wasn't feeling well that day, so I didn't go into, you know, right. the building or whatever. Take yeah. sick days. Listen to your body. <laughs> yes. Seriously. Just listen take to your those gut. days. Somebody walks over your grave and you feel That's your third eye, baby. Go you got to stay in bed. Stay in <laughs> bed today. To if you feel, yeah. you feel a little grumbly in your tumbly, it's because there's going to be a, yeah, you just got to stay home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We had a great time, though, making that movie. And, um the the whole cast the band we're all yeah. still pals and you know we can't really hang out during you know covid times but we used to like get together every few months at you know Aww. golden road brewery and hang out as the band <laughs> and, like, that's so cool great. <laughs> yeah. also so rare i feel like one like that that is such like a like a, a lesson you learn like a hard lesson as like a young actor is that like all the friends you make on set it's like summer camp friends kind of or like yeah oh, it yeah. is Most almost are camp you, friends. right you almost never keep in touch for real with those people like you you text them for like the next two or three months and yes. then it just fades away i, have I will like say one or two per movie i feel like one yeah you, you can come away with a couple keep one you're right <laughs> yeah. I can I can put in the time to keep up this relationship yes. only. I can't do a whole group, but that's so lucky to have like a big fun <laughs> Leonard Skinner band. I know, yeah, and it's like we don't all kind of you know call each other all the time, but once in a while it's like it's time <laughs> somebody texts We're the, all the thread. Together. We're like, it's time. It's Going great. on set so much different from doing like I I did a lot of theater in New York, and mm -hmm. you end up like swimming in kind of the same circles when you do theater in New York instead of like the LA set thing where you like wipe the slate clean of all the people that you knew and worked with in New York you keep working with the same people and you uh, also did some New York acting right I have a, a quick question about at that NYU. Uh, at NYU right NYU. Um, often when we do shows or projects uh, the completely unpredictable happens uh, what was it like playing Lady Macbeth in Washington Square Park during a hailstorm oh my god Wow. You guys did a deep dive. Okay. Wow. No, um, I was there, Lilia. Oh, <laughs> I was Macbeth. <laughs> um, you were the two people who were there for that I was both. I was both of them. <laughs> nice. Uh, my dad was one of them, so. <laughs> I am your dad, Lilia. <laughs> I am your <laughs> You guys can't see, but I just did a fake pull my own face off move. All right. Um, uh, but what was that like? That sounds like an absolute perfect tell. Material. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Describe the face pull. Um, yeah, we, we had a great time. So we were, uh, I, I just always had a great time. I feel like that's how I opened you. But it was, it's true. <laughs> Ugh, um, lame. That's good. That's the mark <laughs> of a good career. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they started doing, there was, uh, two people, uh, 
Rose Bachner and Dan Hassey who who kind of got together and they I think they had gone to some Shakespeare camp together or something and then so when college started they were like we need to be you know the directors of this company that does Shakespeare and repertory in Washington Square Park because nobody's doing that yet um so I kind of got in pretty early on and Nick our mutual friend Sabrina was the one who was directing Macbeth which is Um, how we met incidentally doing a play for her Oh, yes. Yeah, that's how Nick and I met. That was great. Yeah. (laughs) That was a hilarious six minute. (laughs) A six minute sketch. I met Lilia, and when I went to go see that play. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) What a strange moment for all of us. (laughs) Odd time all around. But we did it, and we got Hero Club out of it. So it's good. Uh, It was a win for sure. Um, Yeah, so I got in kind of early on. Macbeth, I think, was, I think, was the first one I did with those guys. Yeah, it was. Um, And. (laughs) <laughs> there was always something it was like w- when we did midsummer it was a rainstorm but Macbeth was like absolutely freezing cold full full blizzard and oh my god I'm oh my sure god that I thought it was like a warm summer hail <laughs> it was so fucking cold and I remember like every my, my boots were wet everything was just completely soaked and I oh. think we did the first act and I think we called it for the second act you're like you know <laughs> you're just like let's just do this tomorrow no one's having a good <laughs> Doing time this to ourselves yeah oh, god no one wants this no one wants to watch Shakespeare while this is happening it's sort of epic but it's only epic for about 20 minutes and then it's just awful Right, so. way yeah, it'd be more cool epic if it to, came and went. <laughs> right, it, it would be way more epic if like everyone was inside, like except for the actors. And yeah. Then it's suddenly, it's <laughs> yeah. like, oh, they're doing something interesting with this. Yeah, and we had yeah. better footwear, but and as it was, not so much. But doing that, the Shakespeare and repertory, I feel like helped me. I mean, I have maybe you know thirteen speeches that are just available in my little head rolodex of Shakespeare just because I had to say them so many times and Mm -hmm. you know it's it's good practice doing those shows like that it's so Mm -hmm. valuable that is so like uh I feel like I haven't done theater in so long I mean other than like you know live comedy stuff but like it having like you don't get that same like that muscle of like having one thing that you say over and over and over and over again for such a long period of time yeah. is so specific. And like, I've gotten so good at just being like, okay, I will read these lines and know them for exactly three hours perfectly. And then they will disappear forever in my brain yep. and I will never need them again. And uh, it's so good to have that kind of like Rolodex of uh, monologues and stuff. Yeah. Well, and it, I think it's, it's like that Malcolm Gladwell 10,000 hours thing where you're like the more you memorize, the better you are at memorizing. And then it helps yeah. with, you know, the odd self tape audition where they're like, here's eight pages. Please have this to us by noon today. And you're like, oh, 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 right, right. Cool. So if I hope to do a good job, I have to like know these immediately. And yeah, uh, yeah that can be helpful. I am <laughs> not good at that. Yeah, <laughs> it's not fun. That was my always my weak point was the memorization, uh, and I would always just barely get it. Like the week before tech, I would be like, I think I got it, yeah. And then I'd fuck up all through tech, and then the show would happen, and I only really messed up like twice in my life that I can remember. That really made me want to like fully throw myself Die. into the orchestra pit <laughs> yeah. and kill myself. Yeah. They're yeah, the yeah, worst yeah. moments ever. One yeah. time I covered successfully, and the other I did not, wow. and it is probably the reason I haven't done theater since I left <laughs> oh, New York. No. I think part of why I'm so good at memorizing is because I am terrified of that moment. Yeah. Like, oh, there's so let me tell you as somebody who has lived in that moment mid fast song. Oh no. Uh <laughs> it's <laughs> like the world freezes. <laughs> The whole audience moves up an inch as their shoulders retract into their neck. (laughs) And, uh, like, I've never looked for a gun. (laughs) But I was like, where's something to kill myself with? If I can kill myself Um, in this moment, If I can kill myself right now, I'll save the show. It'll save the show if I kill myself on stage. Uh, Yeah, because that's what everyone wants to see right now. (laughs) That's what people will remember. That's what rips through your brain. There's a lot of... There's some anxiety in being an actor that people are like, ah, oh, you'll be fine if you're prepared. It doesn't matter. Sometimes no. I was prepared for that one. And it just, sometimes it'll just kick you in the dick. Well, the way you know they what I mean? used to Out do the nowhere. auditions for these shows, the Shakespeare shows, was they'd have, 
you're supposed to come in with a monologue, a uh, Shakespeare monologue, um, uh-huh. anyone. And then um, they do some what wi- they everyone would be in a group. You'd group audition. So oh, everyone who worst. wanted to do it would come sit around in a circle. You'd come in with a Shakespeare speech and then uh, <laughs> and then they do a wild redirect. Like, OK, now you're doing this as a cheerleader on crack or, you know, whatever. And people just completely go up in their lines almost all the time because, oh. you know, you memorize. Yeah. It's hard to memorize and you do it this specific way and you only know it that way. And any kind of diversion is like totally throws you off. Yeah. So hard. Well, also with Shakespeare too, like doing, uh, be, there are so many, uh, I mean, you know, like depending on your director, there are so many, uh, things you have like rules you have to remember with Shakespeare as you like say oh, yeah. and memorize the lines because they're written like poems, yeah. in a like they're meant to be said a specific way. So if suddenly you're like, Here's a new rule. I have to do this crazy character on top of this. It's just, that's it's impossible. It's a lot to take in. I think they were trying to prepare people for the the crazy person who it will walk through the middle of the show outside. Right. <laughs> in like, Washington Square Park. You have just, to sing ah! a song you just learned the lyrics to, but in a different rhythm. And right. then you're just going to be like, right. huh. Yeah. Nope. Oh, not that's happening. terrible. Let's talk about something yeah. less stressful. Hard shifting from that. <laughs> Uh, we're all dog parents here. Yeah. Uh, Lelia, you have your Yorkie mix, Mo. George has his old man dog, Herman Von Scruff. And I have my little black lab, <laughs> Puppy Wilson. Oh, Wilson. What makes Wilson the best of those three in your, <laughs> opi- in, in your opinion, Lelia? <laughs> How do you feel about being wrong, Lelia? How do you feel um, about my dog being the best dog? <laughs> Wilson is a handsome devil, I have to give it to you. Um, he ain't shit, Lily. You can say it. <laughs> He's a shit eater. Um, I, you know, Mo. I just discovered that I didn't realize that there was a word for it, but he's apparently a snorky, which is half oh. schnauzer, half yorkie. Um, snorky is cute. A delightful is a cute name. name for a dog. Uh, yeah, you know, actually, we uh, we grew up with black labs, so Wilson is close to my heart in that way. We grew up with yellow labs. Just yep, I love a lab. Yep. Labs are great. Love a lab. Love a lab. They're smart. Yeah, I mean, Mo is just a delightful uh, 75% belly, you know, <laughs> fluffy little guy who just really <laughs> warms our hearts. 75% <laughs> really belly. Really warms our hearts with his 75% belly body. It's just so cute. He is um, really cute. There are a lot of great a good, pictures. A good little dude, yeah. Of him just fully asleep like a person in your bed. Yes, yeah. Yeah, he doesn't shed, so we can we can spoon that's nice um yeah Ch- Ch- we had a classic chase you know had never had a dog before uh mo and it was a couple years into dating and he had kind of recently moved in uh with me and mo i mean chase not mo <laughs> <laughs> and i was like oh it's time for a dog i really need one and i kept yeah. looking at pictures from the rescue sites and chase was like dude we're actors we're always out and about you know we don't have any routine like how this is not a good idea and I was yeah. like okay you're right you're right right but look at this one it's so <laughs> cute and then <laughs> I saw Mo and she's like ah oh, all right we'll go and we'll go and see him and then of oh, the mistake. first nail in his coffin that's oh, yeah. a mistake oh yeah but now he's obsessed with our dog and of wouldn't course. have it any other way they're worth their that's weight what- in gold you know Jess, Jess, yeah. uh, my girlfriend kind of tricked me into fostering Herman because he was uh, a <laughs> ah, shelter yes. dog and he was like seven or eight years old. And also, a huge now mistake. he's eight or nine. <laughs> huge mistake. Uh, I, I brought him home and he got up on the couch and fell asleep in four seconds. And I was like, oh no, I love him. Oh no, immediately. I don't uh, know he a single sheds person. like a monster. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think I know a single person who has fostered a dog and hasn't adopted that dog like day two of fostering the dog. <laughs> yeah, how do you not? As soon as like it, the the stress of the shelter goes away and they're like, I love it here. You're like, well, you're staying for your whole life. Yep. <laughs> yep. This so, is your home now. This is your home now. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Truly, yeah. While Mo warms hearts, Herman rips farts. Let me tell you about this dog's (laughs) farts. Multiple times, we've had to leave the room and open the window for quite a few minutes to the point where uh, my girlfriend got a, like, a incense stick that we burn every time. Yeah. 
Uh, it has also stick. given it has also given us permission to now fart yeah, sure. with <laughs> yeah. wanton abandon because there's a magic the stick merrier. that makes it go away. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, so ultimately net positive. But <laughs> the, yeah, God. when that well, stick Herman runs has, out one day, Herman has like a street dog stomach, trash where gut, literally like. I mean, I think like day three of you having him, he ate like a box of chicken wings, and you were like, "Well, he's no, dead. no, no." He ate a box of chicken wing bones. Yeah, just oh, the bones. No. Like, just the bones. Only bo- like the terrible. thing that everyone says like that kills dogs. Yep. And they and they never came out. So which means his insides liquefied them like just like acid a in there. like an just yeah a vat of acid. In the I stomach. call him I call him a little tiger shark dog because he just eats trash. But sure. it's inaccurate because when a tiger shark eats something, it shits out the thing and it's full. Yeah. Yeah. Inside of Herman's acid belly, it reduces to nothingness. Wow. One day they'll open That's Herman's amazing. belly and there will be like a license plate and like a yeah, foot license plate with and a, a man, like a, a man's lab hand. In there with guys testing. Yeah, just like a bunch of yeah. Like a full maintenance team oh, that's just working. The experiment is working. The human thinks we are a dog. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, my sister's like, sometimes Mo just looks like a tiny man in a dog suit. <laughs> like, yep. Don't yep. put that image in my head. <laughs> just awful. every time he's staring at you, just like, oh, that's a guy. <laughs> that's no. a tiny weird Please, guy. No. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, to wrap up this uh, this little um, rendezvous via Zoom we've had, Lelio, we have a fun little activity we haven't done in a little bit Ooh. that we want to close out with. Uh, this is D and D Travel Edition. Uh, Nick, what, what's what's D and D Travel Edition? So D and D Travel Edition is kind of how George and I first really got into D and D. We uh, after we kind of learned the basics over a winter break. Uh, we would just kind of walk around campus and every time we were bored, you know, waiting in a food line or <laughs> waiting for a class to start or whatever, we would have a D20 and we would just throw each other into like really rough and tumble, super quick and dirty D&D sessions that were just like, it's you, you're waiting for this class and the building is on fire. What do you do? And Whoa. then you would roll a D20 basically to see like, a success or failure and that was it so anything above a 10 was a success anything below a 10 was a failure and you just try to see how long you could survive in whatever scenario the thing was and we would just kind of go back and forth doing it usually and it ends with everyone dead including yeah, usually. all the people <laughs> but oh, no. it, it's kind of a fun way we found to kind of uh introduce the idea that D D doesn't have to be like a big production like it yeah, can just sure. really be one dice and no like, preparation. No prep at all. And you could just still have fun doing a collective imagination thing with zero effort. Um, so that's what D&D Travel Edition is. You know you know what's fun? I just got word from a friend of mine, uh, Zach uh, Love, who played in that big Clear Veil experiment with all of us. Yeah. That uh, And shout out to Zach, that he runs D&D Travel Edition with his kids at school. He's a oh. teacher. Oh. That is so That's cool. That's awesome. And it's like a really fun like imagination like this would be exercise. A great game to play at school. I'm surprised that it doesn't happen yeah. more often. Well, it totally is like one of those great like limitless imagination games. games. That, like, yeah. Really show sure everyone it's so much better than like a Working zip zap Working together, <laughs> you know, and like following rules and Yeah, oh, like yeah. collective storytelling and yeah. yes anding. Like it's all it's all good lessons all around. Um, so, so what horrifying I've, scenario are you throwing? I've just, <laughs> I've just come up with a fun one. Okay. Uh, and we'll, we'll just start it sort of narratively. Ready? Everybody get down! This is a robbery! Uh, both of you drop <laughs> to your bellies as <laughs> a squad of five armed men all holding semi-automatic weapons explode into the bank that you two are in. Uh... And begin to uh, immediately leap over the counter, hassle the, uh, people, the tellers, um... And you guys are all slammed down to your belly. Uh, just like with everybody else, a gun pointed in your face makes you shrink down. But after getting a couple of seconds, uh, you have full autonomy of your over your actions. Uh, really quick, let's just determine uh, who is at this bank. Is it Nick Williams and Lelia <laughs> Symington, or is it two other people? Nick, who are you? Oh, God. Um, uh, w- w- because we're going into this scenario and where I will surely die... Why don't I'm gonna be a classic good guy with a gun? <laughs> oh God! Uh, <laughs> yeah, that always works. Uh, uh, this is uh, um, uh, Darnell Poots. He's an old uh, ranch hand. Darnell Poots. Texas. Darnell Poots. 
Uh, not it. Nick Williams. Nick Williams is not this bank. He doesn't go to banks anymore. This is Darnell Poots. And Darnell Poots is uh, here at the bank today <laughs> to turn in his last paycheck from a ranch job he was just fired from. <laughs> <laughs> he is a, so Darnell has little to lose. <laughs> he, he is a whopping 89 years old. He's oh, been working yeah. his whole life. Um, and he uh, is wearing a giant belt buckle <laughs> that says, you can pry this belt buckle from my cold dead body. That's a lot of text for a belt buckle. <laughs> yep. It's a big Small buckle. text. <laughs> uh, panning Huge over. belt buckle. Small text. Just behind Darnell in line is Lelia. Nancy Cartwright, 42. <laughs> the, She's got the voice of Bart Simpson. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nancy. That's the voice of yeah, Bart it's Simpson. Her. It's her. <laughs> All right. <laughs> voice actor Nancy Cartwright. <laughs> She's got funny glasses and uh, beautiful funny white glasses. hair. She does, I think. And, um, you know, she's wearing one of those. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> cardigan and shirt pairings that are the same pattern there's like little flowers on them and some uh-huh. pants and um she's just just came here to you know uh deposit one of her checks from the simpsons <laughs> one of her massive residual checks from the simpsons yeah yeah there's like significantly more zeros on your check than yeah. there are on darnell's uh, great. Famous Perfect. Scientologist and voice of Bart Simpson, Nancy Cartwright. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> I didn't know she's a Scientologist. <laughs> sure. Uh, great. So you guys make a, both of you make a perception check for me, really quick. Okay. Hmm. Eighteen. Three. Darnell, three of the uh, <laughs> bank robbers have immediately begun hassling different tellers, while two are on crowd duty. That is what you notice. All of them are armed and alert. Uh, however, you think that maybe if you waited for just the right time, uh, you could potentially make your move without them, uh, being aware of it if you time it correctly. Okay. That, that is how Darnell That's all thinks. the information you guys have. You guys may now make actions freely and without any kind of turn order. It's just going to be chaos. Let's do this. <laughs> Darnell scans the room for any security guards who, hmm. are, who are in the room. Make a perception or, or, check. and any other, what he perceives as other good guys with guns in the area. Right. No problem. <laughs> Go ahead and make that perception check. Um, oh, wait, sorry. Seven. Great. You do see another good guy with a gun, so to speak. Um, old man... <laughs> uh, old man uh, Jessica Stillman... Jessica Stillman. Uh, so old man Jesse, uh, he is 95 years old. Uh, he is holding, uh, like, kind of strapped to his back. He has, or like, like a, uh, a shotgun, like, stuffed under his coat. Um, he always comes in, uh, very illegally armed. Uh, but you see, and he's wild-eyed and crazy already looking to make his move. And he pegs eyes with you, uh, and kind of mouths to you something. Make a quick perception check to see what he mouths to you. 13. We doing this? <laughs> uh, psst, psst. Hey, hey, old guy. <laughs> uh, Dar- Darnell breaks his intense eye contact with old man Jessica and uh, turns to Nancy Cartwright and says, Wait a minute. <laughs> Ain't you the voice of Bert Simpson on the TV? You know, it's funny you should say that because most people do not recognize me. <laughs> but I, I, I'm flattered. Anyway. More pressing matters at hand. Um, is that a gun you've got there? <laughs> You're goddamn right it's a gun. No talking! Oh okay. God! Everybody shut the fuck up! <laughs> Listen, Nancy Cartwright. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna make it out of here alive. You just gotta follow my lead. I've been in multiples of this situation in the past. Were you starting them or finishing them? <laughs> well, I'm here, ain't I? Right, right. Okay. <laughs> see see that jumpy feller over there with the uh, 90% body that's just a, it's just bones? He's like a skeleton with a shotgun under his coat? 
as soon as you gesture to him, he stands up. <laughs> That's the signal! Bang! And he fires <laughs> off his shotgun. Uh, it jams, so nothing happens, and he gets lit up and blasted through the wall. Oh. Uh, oh, my God. God. But this, is, this, this might be your moment. Yeah, this is exactly <gasps> what Darnell was hoping for. <laughs> <laughs> and he uses this opportunity to side crab crawl uh, behind a desk. <laughs> Great. Uh, make a stealth check. 16. Yes, you uh, scrab doodle behind this little desk and uh, everybody loses sight of you. Nancy, what are you doing? Um... <laughs> um. Uh, Nancy's pulled some crackers out of her purse and <laughs> she starts um, uh, she starts like throwing them across the room to uh, create a diversion so that she can Great. Hide. <laughs> roll a, roll a performance check with your crackers. You have she has to have a bonus to that because she's Nancy Cartwright the voice of Bart Simpson. Uh yeah, to Only cracker for throwing per- of performance. course. Yeah, go ahead and tell me your straight roll. Four. Four. Uh, the crackers draw attention, and immediately there is a fella on you holding a gun to you, but he hasn't shot you. Uh, but he says, stop throwing crackers! Uh, oh, God. Okay. I'm so sorry. Uh, um, I thought okay. you might be hungry. <laughs> uh, roll bluff check. Deception. Oh, sorry. That was my chapstick. Eighteen. Uh, he picks up a cracker sniffs it, and says, thanks, I'm actually pretty hungry, and takes a couple of bites. Uh, Meanwhile, Darnell, behind the counter... (laughs) Darnell pulls out his absurdly large pistol from his waistband uh, that is, like, that that kind of pistol that's, like, annoyingly embossed with, like, he's, like, put his life savings into making this pistol (laughs) look really cool so that he can show it off to, like, his other ranch hand buddies. Mm -hmm. It says, like, do, like the hand of God, like on on the barrel, and all sorts of bullshit like that. Um, and he kind of gets into like a Charlie's Angel style pose and backs up to the desk, <laughs> and then peeks to see where he is in relation to all of the people. Okay, go ahead and make a perception check. Eight. Great. Uh, right now you only see uh the three. Uh, excuse me, you only see the two that are out in this hallway. The other three have disappeared. Oh, boy. Or out in this main lobby, I guess it would be, this main area of the bank. Um, Darnell peeks out, trying to get Nancy Cartwright's attention. <laughs> psst, yeah, what? Psst. Go try to get old man Jessica's shotgun. Uh, I'm on it. <laughs> um, uh... Nancy sees that the man who was standing above her is munching on his cracker and has wandered a bit away from her. And she starts Mm -hmm. uh, body crawling (laughs) over to the gun. Make a stealth check. Oh, Christ. 14. 14. You are over soon. Like, the the two remaining here have, like, gone to check out everybody else. You reach uh, the old man's... uh, lifeless body which hasn't even like exploded into viscera it's just like dust like <laughs> it and it, <laughs> into sorry, dust no. because he was so old. yeah this guy was just dust so there is like a pile of dust in the corner and his shotgun is lying within it you pick it up it is uh unjammed because he was just managed to unjam it before he got lit up through the back wall uh and now you have it um uh, nancy looks over to darnell for the signal <laughs> Uh, Darnell does one more peek to see who's around and to see if it's a good time to go guns blazing like Butch and Cassidy, like he's always wanted to do. Go ahead. Seven. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that maybe is a yes to Darnell. Yeah. Uh, Darnell comes over the the desk and says, You freeze! This is a reverse robbery! Huh? <laughs> Get down on the ground, or Mikey, I'll shoot. shoot him! <laughs> oh God! Roll an attack. Seventeen. Nice. 
Oh, I roll a nine. So Darnell immediately shoots one of the men who drops to the ground completely motionless while the other man sprays a whole bunch of bullets that impact on the back wall, immaculately missing and framing the outline of Darnell. Uh, it is now Nancy's turn. Um, Nancy <laughs> points the gun at that guy and tries to shoot him. Roll an attack. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Eleven. Eleven. Bang! That guy drops as well. Now yeah! the o- the other three start emerging after having heard gunshots from uh, behind the bank teller. Oh, sure. And they all leap over the side. Three of them will take attacks at uh, uh, Darnell. Uh, one is going to be a 13. Another is a nat 20. And another is a nat 18. Uh, so that is going to be... Oh, no. Yikes. Out of your 20 health... 15... <laughs> Uh, da, da 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 17. That is 17 damage, and I'm just rolling the d20 for damage. So I rolled three d20s for that. Oh my uh, god. So, seven, so Darnell is uh, shot multiple times, but mostly just grazed. Uh, you are thrown to the floor with three HP remaining. Uh, now it is your turn, Darnell. Darnell reaches into his coat where uh, there is a frag grenade that he stole during the Korean War. <laughs> <laughs> And is kept for just such an occasion for his entire life up until this point. And he pulls the pin and runs towards the <laughs> the remaining bank tellers. One of the uh, civilians goes, is that a grenade? Oh my god! <laughs> and all of the people begin to run despite all of the gunfire over their heads. Uh, and Darnell sprints forward. Just Go ahead yells, and roll. Uh, uh, Don't tread on me, you dirty communist robbers. <laughs> roll a d20. <laughs> the grenade does not go off. Oh, no. It is a complete dud. Uh, and now it is Nancy's turn. <laughs> um. Darnell is running, holding it in front of him, just sprinting openly towards the robbers. Wait, wait were you going to kill yourself, too? That's bold. I sure was. Nice. Um, okay. Uh, Nancy uses this distracting moment to um, use the butt of the gun to break the glass... Uh, of the bank wall behind her and fucking leave. <laughs> Great roll attack. <laughs> no one has ever done that during one of these. 18. 18. The bulletproof glass of the bank shatters as Nancy Cartwright summon and summons all of her inner Scientology strength. And bang! Xenu fucking shatters that window for you. Uh, you jump out the window, hightail it. There are several vehicles around. Uh, all of the police are outside. They see you holding the gun and all of them yell, Freeze! <laughs> Nancy drops the gun and yells, I'm Nancy Cartwright! <laughs> Make a persuasion check. Oh my god. Eight? And oh Nancy Cartwright god. goes up like platoon. Just <laughs> go, 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 And Nancy Cartwright oh, is no, uh, reduced to mist outside of the bank. Holy shit. Meanwhile, uh, Darnell, uh, these three all will attack you. That's a four. But I dropped the gun. <laughs> That's a two. <laughs> <laughs> the police the system is broken in this country. The police, and- the police are bad and dumb. Uh, <laughs> some some of them are okay. Uh, only very few some. Uh, <laughs> I only say that they, because I know somebody who is a police officer who is mad. Them, none but of my them. None of them personal know feelings. Who Nancy Cartwright and, is? Yeah, none of them know who Nancy Cartwright is, and none not of these like cops you, are those like good ones. Darnell. These are not all like these me. pieces of shit uh, that have ruined the whole system. <laughs> anyway, just so everybody knows where I stand. <laughs> I'm glad we uh, got that out of the way. Glad we got that out there because I didn't want to be like, yeah, cops are great. Uh, let's do this. Uh, D20. Uh, oh, my God. All of them missed Darnell. <laughs> I got a four, a nine, and a nine. Uh, so, Darnell, uh, all of them go to take swings at you, and your uh, last moment of, like, adrenaline kicks in. All the, the last reserves of Darnell's adrenaline <laughs> are used up as you matrix dodge all three of these physical attacks. And now it is your turn again. Oh, my God. Um, okay, um, utilizing, (laughs) uh, martial arts he learned while fighting in the Korean War. Sure, sure. (laughs) Um, he attempts to take out the remaining three in one, like, kind of windmill kick, Jackie Chan style. Mm -hmm, Go ahead. 17. Wham, bam, bam, bam. They all go down. <laughs> uh, just like Darnell absolutely poots. right to the floor. Darnell poots. He's Darnell's so leg is broken from that kick. Uh, uh, Nancy Cartwright, make a religion check for me. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> mm. oh 15. 
15. <laughs> Xenu's power courses through your maimed body, and you are resurrected as an agent of Xenu. Uh, no. You stand up in front of this crowd of police officers, like uh, exorcist style, just like whomp, straight up. <laughs> uh, and you may now take your turn empowered by Xenu. You have all the powers of an alien all god. All the powers of Xenu, the alien god. Wow. Okay, this is exciting. <clears throat> um, okay, Nancy Cartwright, a.k.a. Xenu, um, <laughs> walks, also <laughs> Xenu. <laughs> walks back into the bank and goes to pick up Darnell's mangled body and carry him outside. <laughs> Darnell, uh, you are picked up by uh, like a, a glowing eyed Nancy Cartwright. <laughs> Your leg is hanging off at a completely insane angle. It's me, Nancy Cartwright. <laughs> Her voice reverberates throughout Don't the entire. Don't have a cow, man. Uh, make a quick, uh, uh, let's call it a wisdom save to withstand the might of Xenu's voice. <laughs> That's okay. Yes. <laughs> 12 yep you do uh, you feel uh, blood drip from your ears as this voice <laughs> enters your psyche Sorry. Uh, and then Xenu okay. walks from the bank holding Darnell Poots in uh, their hands and all the police officers again yell freeze <laughs> drop the old man what are we gonna do Nancy Cartwright slash Xenu um, Nancy Cartwright slash Xenu like lifts up into the air and <laughs> tries to fly away. <laughs> you do. Where do you fly to? Oh, where um, do you fly to? And flies to. Um, <laughs> make you know what? Make a charisma save right now. Oh, okay. That'd be a three. <laughs> Your home planet of Glorpshablorp is calling to you. Uh, Darnell. Seems like you've had enough of this world. You're coming with me. Wait, <laughs> into space unprotected. Xenu disappears in a puff of smoke. All the cops are like, where'd he go? Uh, where'd they go? I don't know where they are. They start looking around, and meanwhile, we poof to an abandoned uh, green floored, green dirt. It's like green dirt. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, with planet with a bright purple, red, and yellow sky with these massive uh, machinations uh, looming in the distance. Uh, buildings, drills, you're not sure. Can you, Darnell uh, breathe in this Nope. Place? Make a constitution <laughs> save, Darnell. Oops. <laughs> 16. Uh, Darnell holds his breath. You have limited time to figure out some kind of breathing source, but you see that uh, his eyes are starting to turn red as his blood boils from within. <laughs> Um, Nancy Cartwright slash Xenu goes to make a, like, a little head bubble for him. Make a, uh, quick check, charisma check. Or, yeah, let's make that an arcana check. It doesn't matter what it is. I'm just, for flavor. Five. Five. Uh, you immediately, uh, encase Darnell's head in this bubble. Darnell's eyes go wide for a second, and then it becomes clear that the bubble has severed all the way through his neck, and they separate, and Darnell is dead on the ground. <laughs> oh. Oh, shit. (laughs) Well, it's a good way to go, I guess. And Xenu returns to their uh, (laughs) ultimate kingdom of power, having (laughs) having resurrected in the the body of Nancy Cartwright his ultimate goal all along. Uh, (laughs) This has been D&D Travel Edition. You can play D&D Travel Edition with you and your friends. And If if that sounded super fun to you. Ideally, your lunch would be ready now. It was fun from this end, guys. Now the waiter has has brought you your lunch, and you have passed the time effectively. Yeah. Uh, yeah, You're no longer bored. (laughs) Uh, Well, real fast, before we wrap up, Lelia, uh, you're you're now currently uh, doing, playing Jade on City of Mirrors. Mm -hmm. Uh, What's, like, one thing that you've really enjoyed about kind of this season and being a PC for the first time in Hero Club? Oh my gosh, I have been having a blast. I I was I texted you guys uh, when the last episode came out because I was like, oh god, I need to work on s- s- not smiling through all of my <laughs> narration lines because I sound like a chump. Oh, but I, it's I, no, I, you don't. Literally, it's, you sound great, and we all do it all the it's time. It's just so funny. I mean, you like all the in between stuff, and also everybody else's decisions about what to say and do. It's just so. I I'm fully in joy while we do it i think it is just such a blast and i gotta say george you just 
I, I feel like every episode I have personally been on the edge of my seat. Like, what's going to happen to oh, us? Oh, yes. good. That's 100%. what I want. 100%. So, it's so yeah. much fun. Yeah. As, as exciting as it is to, uh, hopefully, to listen to, we are also, like, so sto- like oh, stoked so and fun. surprised at every moment. Yeah. We got, I got really, yeah, it's been uh, so fun. Loose with the with the, like the uh, very conceptualized encounter designs this time around. I think it's uh, made for yeah. some really fun improv from you guys giving like getting like a really specific set of circumstances that are like lean into a genre. I won't ruin anything, but there is uh, one coming up that is like sort of an <laughs> it's an encounter with no real combat. Uh, where a mystery kind of gets solved. Uh, <laughs> oh, <the laughs> let's just leave it there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Shh, shh, your way, your way. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, you guys will see. Um, it is but, great. So, but, yeah, yeah Jade yeah. is such a great character. Jade is uh, hilarious. You are such an amazing addition to the team, Lelia. Such, it, like, you are, like, so, Thanks, like, ready to go and on it and <laughs> yeah. all about telling, like... <laughs> You uh, do the thing that we love most in Hero Club, which is make choices that aren't necessarily best for the situation, but exactly what your character would do, which is way more fun and interesting to be like, this isn't going to actually help us, but this is exactly how I would handle this. (laughs) Right. The point is not that everything should go according to the perfect plan like that. Yeah, exactly. What's what's fun about that? It shouldn't go according to plan. The, the most fun stuff is when everything goes completely batshit, and that's yes. uh, what's been happening all season. Yes. Well, and George, too, I feel like it's so cool that you allow other players, you know, guest players to really influence the path. Oh, take. man. This uh, season especially yeah. has the craziest guests I've ever seen. The characters coming in are like, it's like we are like all Michael Jordan in Toon World in Space Jam. Like, oh, for sure. We're just like walking from insane. lunatic character to lunatic character. Yeah. I think for like the beginning of this, you guys are all the lunatics. And I think that's what everybody has heard so far is after like episode three has come out. And I think from here on out, it is you guys are the we straight men. We get real men. normal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> once episode four rolls we're around. Grounded. Yeah. We're the yeah, grounded you ones. Guys are the, grounded. Once episode four rolls around, you guys become the grounded ones, especially yep. because your characters are so grounded in the genre that yeah. it allows everybody else to be completely insane. Yep. Um, <laughs> yes. And it's really good. And Jade is such a fun character. Like the... The detail that Jade is always starving is like one of my favorite details. <laughs> so oh, such a fun throughout small detail. the whole thing. Like almost, yeah. you're like the Brad Pitt of this season of oh, Hero yeah. Club. Always like, eating, always silk eating shirts and weird stuff, that, and always eating hot dogs or whatever the hell. Yep, eating. always like casing a bank while scarfing a hot dog yeah. for no reason. Sure, scarfing not? a bag of nuts. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so and and seeing Marty's art too. I'm just like, man, I want to hang out with these guys. Yeah, I know. <laughs> They're so fun. Well, and and soon we'll get to do it in person again, which will be really fun cuz yeah. that's Yeah, <laughs> when we get to do like a studio record again. That would be so yeah. nice. Yeah. And have like cocktails while we do it, what? which is more fun. Oh, we used to so drink, good. man. At 10:30 yeah, a.m. <laughs> yeah. Well, usually we would like we used to do it night, for like, night records. We used to oh, do fun. like 7 p.m. to like midnight. Wow. And then we um, switched. We were recording out of anonymous for a while in like a studio, and we yeah. would do like lunch records, but we would yeah. still do like lunch and a little whiskey at the end. Yeah. It was very fun. A lunch um, cocktails are kosher. They're yeah. told that's on the level. Yeah. Like <laughs> hey, spe- during quarantine, <laughs> any time cocktails yeah, are I mean, on sure. the level. <laughs> I'm drunk right now. Because <laughs> time, time is a construct. <laughs> time is a construct. Matter. Nothing is real. Well, Lelia, that'll just about do us for today. Uh, where can do you have anything to plug, and where can people find you on the internet? Um, my OnlyFans. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have an Instagram. I do accents on my OnlyFans. Yeah. <laughs> Really disappointing for people. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants it. I have gotten Everyone zero bites. Me. I am the oh, that's um, too funny. Uh, I have an Instagram. It's at Lelia Skips, um, and it's just a photo journal of my life. Um, that's Force. where you can see a lot of good documentation of Mo of the in Mo. bed. Yes, there's a whole yes. highlight devoted. So if you're interested, <laughs> um, yep. I uh, Brute Force is getting color corrected and uh all the sound is finishing getting mixed right now so um i think we're gonna start doing festival 
not we, I, I'm not a part of it anymore. <laughs> but um, uh, the idea, I think, is to go festivals and then uh, end up streaming somewhere cool. So I will keep you posted about that. But um, yeah, and then you can find me in Hero Club next Yeah. Week. <laughs> yeah. All right. And you can check out my OnlyFans at Springtime for Georgie. Oh, boy. Uh, make sure you <laughs> check that I'm out. There's four subscription tiers. Uh, <laughs> yeah, four tiers. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be disappointed by the fourth tier. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I guarantee it. Really gross. I out. guarantee it. <laughs> really gross. You'll be disappointed out. by that fourth tier. Um, uh, well, I think that'll just do us for this episode. Make thanks sure, for joining us, Lilia, thanks, so thank early you in the so morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and everybody out there, thank you for listening and following uh, this season. We're so excited about the rest of City of Mirrors and where it goes. Uh, you guys truly haven't seen anything yet. I mean, it, like, yeah, it there really have been a couple. Up. It really ramps up. There have been a couple of action-packed episodes, but it's truly just the beginning of such a crazy season. And we, we've got a hell of one next uh, week. We've got uh, Hannah Fagerbaki returning oh. as uh, a fun guest character who we may or may not have seen before in this season. And we also uh, have uh, a very special guest. Nolan North is joining us oh, once great. again. Uh, voice of Nathan Drake. Voice is of coming Nathan Drake from Uncharted. As... Uh, well, not the first because Jack was so fucking batshit, but like one of the many colorful characters that come in. He is a villain that is the most eccentric, probably like Batman villain we've ever had on the show. He's awesome. <laughs> he is so good mm-hmm. and German, so Super you you German. definitely don't want to miss it. Um, you gotta get this. the The Nolan German accent is incredible, oh, top notch. Uh, but make sure you follow us at Hero Club Podcast and. Uh, Keep listening and subscribing, and thank you so much for all of your patronage so far. It means the world to us. And uh, Big news coming soon. Stay tuned with us. Big news coming soon. Stay tuned, and we'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Welcome to Hero Club, members only. Glad to have you. This is where we talk about all the things that we don't get to say on the show, because that's not our thing. Welcome to Hero Club, members only.